Welcome back to another episode of the No Rain, No Rainbows podcast. So glad you're joining us. If this is your first time listening, first, thank you for your time. Secondly, this is a podcast about getting through your hard times. Life is hard, but it's worth the squeeze. We're all going to have those storms here and there, but we promise it's worth it. Eventually, you'll get to your sunshine and your rainbows, and you'll live your best life. And we're all about finding some tactics and some, some stories and sharing some people who can maybe help you get through your hard times. So that is the goal of this podcast, helping you get through your hard times. And and joining me today, somebody who knows about potential and pulling it out of not just people, but businesses as well. Um, I'm really excited for this episode. We're joined by Terry Palma. We were just talking about before, not to be confused with Palmer, the (laughs) Arnold Palmer that some people might drink. Um, Terry, thank you for being on the show. Thank you for having me, Ted. Um, I know you're with Multi-Channel Media. And I guess really quick for our listeners that are listening, why not introduce yourself, let them know uh, how you came about to Greenville, South Carolina, and, and what it is you do. Very good. Well, in 19, about October of 1987, uh, I was hired by Furman University to be the men and women's swim coach. Yeah. And so uh, I was very excited to get back into collegiate uh, swimming. I, I had swam as a collegiate swimmer at UCLA. So, and I had been coaching um, in the Culver City area. Um, and then I had taken time off. So this was an opportunity to get back into something I loved, and uh, the opportunity came, and that's how I got here. So I stayed with Furman for about two seasons, I think it was, mm-hmm. and then they decided to drop their swim program. So uh, we, my wife and I, we loved Greenville, um, and we started a family here. So uh, I started a swim club. It turned into what's called Team Greenville now, which is one of the larger teams in South Carolina. Wow. In fact, they just won the... Um, the long course state championships, nice. I believe. So they, they've carried on and they're doing very well. And uh, then I, I, I coached some high school. I did coach Greenville High for about 10 seasons. My children went to Greenville High, so uh, they were soccer players, but I made them swim too <laughs> yeah. because of the conditioning. And so um, then after I retired, I always had a, a, a desire. I didn't want to not do something. So I enjoyed marketing. I enjoyed researching marketing and, and helping people. Like yeah. in swimming, I've really enjoyed helping someone get from where they were to a place that they wanted to be, whether that was an Olympics or that was just to make the state meet. You know, yeah. They always were improving. So my goal was to, to help our local community in the, in the business areas and help them improve or do what they want with their businesses. Yeah. And that's kind of what I'm doing today. I started a new company, Multi-Channel Media, was really started years ago, <laughs> but it officially started in December of uh, 2018. Love it. And and we're going to be unpacking a lot of, of kind of what you're doing now, but kind of going back through coaching, swimming, and being a swimmer yourself, I know through our conversations that we've had, you've mentioned on how you love, you know, pulling the potential out of people and, right. and coaching, coaching that. And I guess in the swimming aspect, but relating it to the real world, when you have these young athletes – that came under you and you started coaching them, what were some of the, the systems or some of the things you kind of implemented with them to help them get to their potential? That's a great question. Well, first, I think tech, technique is important because it, it doesn't do any good to do a lot of training in the pool hour-wise or, or yardage-wise if your stroke techniques aren't efficient. Mm-hmm. So we worked very, uh, even at the higher levels, every day we made sure our strokes were efficient and, and proper. Um, and then once you go from there, then it's a matter of taking the individual athlete, even though they're fixed in, in a group, trying to develop s- systems that help e- each individual person. I'll give you an example. Um, we ran three systems in our, in our weekly program. We swam six days a week. Yeah. And the first one was uh, anaerobic threshold. And basically, so you have all these swimmers in the pool, but... We're not using a clock to time what they're doing. We're using the clock to, to take their pulse. Okay. So they'll swim a distance. They'll come in and, and measure their pulse for a 10-second read, and their pulse needs to be in a certain range. If it's too low, they have to swim faster the next round. If it's too high, they get to slow down, actually. So, <laughs> and each person's different. So we're all doing the same practice. We might be going 2100s, mm-hmm. but... Each person is doing it and coming in taking 10, 10 seconds and adjusting their swim based on their pulse. Wow. We did that twice a week. Now, how, what was the benefits that came about at that for the group and for the individual? Well, number one, it, it, it 
improves your anaerobic threshold mm -hmm. so and your oxygen intake and you're working specifically for your body in the condition it's in at this at that moment yeah so even as we do it through the through the season they're getting better and they're actually swimming faster because uh, we do other sets we we'll time them so we know they're getting faster mm -hmm. um and, and their conditioning is improving the anaerobic threshold really worked on conditioning yeah but what's so neat about it is because the way we did it it still worked on the individual you would have been different than i would have yet we're both getting the benefits out of it mm -hmm. the, the best for us yeah even though mine would have been different than yours would have been i love that because i think with that system and the way you describe it i feel like it's easy for a lot of coaches to kind of have a team and they have a layout and they say okay we're gonna help the team but it seemed like with this technique and this system you were you were focused on the team as a whole and bettering them as a group but you gave each and every single individual swimmer that the personal attention and that personal, I guess, leg up right. to become better. So that was one system we ran two, two days a week. So we're running three systems. So we'll run system one on like Monday and Thursday. We'll run system two on Tuesday and Friday. And we're on system three on Wednesday and Saturday. Yeah. And we just rotate through that. So our next system we did was since we were working on conditioning, our next one was called active rest. So we're gonna give them a hard set that they're gonna do. But now instead of just sitting and being non-active, mm -hmm. the next part of that set is swim slowly and just recover while you're swimming. Wow, Called okay. active rest. And then the third rounds that we would do on the other two days would be um, anaerobic, uh, the um, um, <laughs> you max, threshold max. You're gonna swim VO2 max. Yeah. You're gonna swim as fast as you can for uh, about 45 seconds. Wow. I mean, yeah. really short burst and you have long rest like we'll go maybe 675s which is not long distance on on eight minutes wow rest yeah so we're running different groups on that so we're working on the conditioning then we're working on um active rest how to get our bodies to recover on that and now we're working on vo2 max really really putting the effort in getting it yeah so those three systems we continue to do on a weekly basis all through the season this kids improved Mm -hmm. So I, I kind of brought that to business. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I love that. And, and, and I could see how, how those systems and really that can apply to, to business and, and folks in the real world. Now, in, in your swimmers and even in some of your businesses, kind of talking about the potential and pulling it out of some of, some of the athletes and some of the business owners that you work with. Have you ever seen an athlete or business owner get to a level of performance that they didn't themselves think they were capable of? Oh, all the time. <laughs> all, in fact, the, the, it's even funnier because the parents, when you're when you're running up my system, and we also I, there's some other things I threw in there that nobody else does, um, and, and it's and it's it's hard for them to believe it because number one, we're not doing a lot of yardage as compared to what other teams are doing, mm -hmm. uh, and so the parents were really doubtful in what's going on. The swimmers bought in pretty well. Yeah, they just bought in. They knew. But when we get to a swim meet and they're improving their times, they start getting that confidence. I remember at one point we went to the state championship and the parents said, I never thought he was going to swim that fast. <laughs> you know, I mean, <laughs> you just you got to have faith. Now, once you've done it for a season, and they know you. It's a lot easier that second year when they come back for you. Yeah. You know, you don't have to deal with it. But when you get new people. They have to go through that belief, belief curve, you know, mm -hmm. trust, you know, and what you're doing. Yeah, they're a little skeptical yeah. at first. And I kind of, I had three rules, you know. I said, these are the three rules that we, we go under, okay? Number, if you want to talk to me about your swimmer, I'm an open book, but do you have to meet these three rules? Number one, is your swimmer happy? Mm -hmm. Okay? Number two, is your swimmer improving? Mm-hmm. Okay, if you answer to both of those are yes, we don't have a third question. <laughs> if one of those answers, then you can come with a third question. What, what's going on? What do we need to do? Yeah. So I didn't usually have someone ask the third question. Yeah. Number one and number two are yes. But that's one, all. But, the, you know, they, because everybody wants to know why aren't you doing what other people are doing? Other teams are doing. Well, if you want what other teams are doing, go to other teams. Yeah. Same thing in business. Yeah. You know, if you want to do what other business is doing, go do what they're doing, you know. Follow our system, and you'll get the results that we've seen historically year after year after year after year. And what are some of those those results? I mean, not to kind of spoil it, but I know well, you're I mean, we'll, athletes. Well, we'll start at the top. I've, I've coached personally three gold medal Olympians 
from the year of uh, 1984 all the way through 19, uh, I mean 2008 in Beijing mm -hmm. um, at some point in their career. And locally, I have dozens of state champions on all levels. Mm -hmm. And again, I didn't make them. We, they were they followed our system and they improved. Yeah, I had people that uh, most of them. I'm going to say 90 percent of my kids because I'm going to leave some room. Always improved mm -hmm. from season to season, and they should. Yeah, without you know getting injured, that's the main thing. Um, and in business, businesses should grow every year, year after year, you know, without having downfall. Even if there's a bad economy, mm -hmm. if you're doing the right thing for your clients. Yeah. So, but the, you know, we we've had success, and and I, I had a lot of good mentors that helped me develop these systems. Yeah. You know, a lot of coaches during the time from from California and other college coaches that helped me a lot. Yeah, I, I love something you just said to kind of pull that out a little bit when you mentioned, you know, the swimmers should always get better and so should businesses, regardless of the economy. Whether the water is smooth or rough, the swimmer should be getting better in the water and business is doing the same thing. How do you measure the growth? At, sure, with swimming, it, it's something as simple as a stopwatch, per, perhaps. How can you measure the growth of a company that might not always be higher revenue year in, year out? How, maybe it's assets. Maybe it's size. How do you measure success from either the swimmer to the business? Well, one of the, the ways we measure it is the rate of return on their investment. So they're going to invest time and money with us for certain results. Mm -hmm. Those results are just like time for swimming. Those results will show whether that investment, that strategy, that system was working or not. Yeah. And we're the first to, to move to, I mean, the system that I had described to you was a system that I used in my last three to five years of coaching. It's not what I did over the first 30 years. Yeah. There was a lot of, you know, testing and, and going from there. Now, I do can say that I didn't know what I was doing when I was younger, but I was using some of those systems way back when, when one of my good swimmers who, who's a five-time Olympian, mm -hmm. five Olympic games. Wow. And in her first one, before her first one, we were doing very short, fast sprints mm -hmm. to get her to be a really fast swimmer over a period of time. So, And that ended up being our VO2 max sets. Yeah, yeah. You know? So it's interesting how it all came full circle. So was it something through the years as you experimented and you just paid attention to the results and, and, and focused – on how the system would give a return eventually you ended up coming up with i mean really with the blueprint of, yes. of, of what to do and that's something that can only come through years of well i i took the blueprint research. once i had the successful blueprint for swimming i said okay and if you look at all any successful business look at mcdonald's mm -hmm. okay mcdonald's is a multi-billion dollar corporation literally run by teenagers Correct? Yeah. And why? Because they have a system in place. All you have to do is learn the system, follow the system. There are a lot of places that serve a better burger, yeah. but they don't have a better system. Yeah. So that's what we're striving after, a system that anybody can plug into. And if you follow it, you're, your business is going to be successful. Mm -hmm. And if it's not working, we're the first to switch the knob. <laughs> I mean, I have an uh, uh, a chiropractor in town, local who we tried something. I really believed in this process. Um, it made sense to me. And it was doing what I thought it should do, but I wasn't satisfied with it. Mm -hmm. And so we shift gears, and we, he wasn't on first anywhere to be found in Google. So we instigated this new you know, code that we're doing, the system with Google. And within the first 48 hours, he had a, uh, a listing on the first page of Google. Wow. Today, we're 60 days into the program, and he has three listings on the first page of Google. Mm -hmm. So we know that's working. We just we want to continue to work on that element and build other ones too. Absolutely. But it but it's you know the systems. I love that you're you're mentioning systems because just like the system, it's like the technique of the swimmer. Yes. And and it seems as though when you're talking about potential, you're pulling out really the highest capabilities of this business or this person. You focus on the foundation, you focus on the on the bottom, on yeah. how it's established from the ground up. Well, I'm glad you mentioned that because a swimmer, as I said, their stroke technique is important. Mm -hmm. Well, I equate that in business ethics. So if a person, if a business, and I feel, is not ethical, that means their strokes aren't good. 
Okay. And either they're going to change that and let me help them, or I won't work with them. Yeah. Or in swimming, they'll all be willing to do that. Mm -hmm. So that, you know, that, I mean, the, the same principles working from the ground up works in business. But you have to, be, you have, to have your client that you're serving first in, in mind, not your bottom line in your pocketbook. Yeah. If you do it right for your client, your pocketbook will be taken care of. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of how I think about it. Yeah. And I, could, I hear how you, you kind of match the, the coaching and the swimming to the businesses so well. How did you go from, from coaching swimming? You mentioned that you, there was a little bit of a retirement, but you needed to do something. So how did you land into what you're doing now and <laughs> in, in, in building businesses? Was that always something that itched it was, you? It, it was always something I was involved in and doing, whether I was working for somebody else. And, and I've done a lot of things. Like in swimming, I've tried a lot of strokes, you yeah. know, and <laughs> I finally found one that worked for me. Yeah. Um, so when I say I started multi-channel media in December, it's been a 20 year process of finding what I felt good in working with. Mm -hmm. You know, I used to do social media or, you know, other things that I did. And I wasn't, what I'm really good at is bringing the team together. So I, I, I own the business, okay? Mm -hmm. I go out and market our services to businesses. I don't fulfill most of what I do. I find the best in the field that are become join my team mm -hmm. because I want the best. And that's why I back what I do on my services. If you're not happy, I don't do a long-term contract. And on the, on the Google first page, if you're not on the first page of Google in the first 30 days, you don't pay again until you are. Yeah. <laughs> so, but I know my team. Yeah. My team's really good. <laughs> yeah. You know, and I, and I trust them. Mm -hmm. And then they trust, my clients trust me. So that's kind of how the swimming and business work together. Yeah, and, and as somebody who, who's dealt with some of the most talented and skilled swimmers, you probably have an eye for talent and you have an eye for, for potential businesses. I guess, what are some things you look for in, in an ideal business or, or kind of when you have a swimmer come and you say, oh, this swimmer has potential? Right. Perfect. So here's, here's the analogy from swimming and business. And you can get a great swimmer very talented but if they don't want to put in the work and the time it, they're going to be a great talent that could have been mm -hmm. and i've had several of those swimmers and i let them know i don't push them beyond i say you know we don't know how good you really could be you have potential yeah i had a lot of those swimmers luckily when they all went on to college they all swam faster and better because i didn't burn them out before they got there mm -hmm. so in business it's the same way you've got to spend money in advertising Advertising is the king, you know. Referral marketing is obviously the best. Yeah. But how are you going to spend your time referral? Mar You've got to go after a warm market, but maybe on Facebook with your Facebook page, or a cold market with Google or whatever. But you have to be spending money. So the equivalent of finding a talent in swimmer that's finding a great business that has a good business model and a good service to do. Yeah. The, the swimmer's ready to put in the work and willing to put in the work. Is the business ready to spend the money? Yeah. That's really the factor. Yeah. You know, and the, and but you have to have matrix to you can't just go spend money and hope that it happens. You have to make sure that what you spend if I spend a dollar in advertising, I want two dollars back on return on my investment. Mm -hmm. Well, would you give me a dollar if I gave you two dollars? Absolutely. How often would you do that? Every day. Right. Well, we want Until to I have more it. dollars to give. Exactly. <laughs> so but th that's the equivalent of a great talented swimmer and putting it in the work and a business with a good service, good ethics. And they'll put money into it to, to grow. Yeah. Those are the same things. Well, as a swimmer who would most likely, um, as a swimmer who would most likely first start seeing the results when their time goes faster, I imagine they'd put a little bit more trust in your system, just Correct. like the parents being a little skeptical at first. Right. right. Would you see the same kind of pattern with the business? Well, that's why we have that 30 day uh, you guarantee in there. Yeah. For that one service, you know. Um, and we give a lot of bonuses. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like when you come to swim for, when you came to swim for me, you got a lot of bonuses that other teams didn't get because I have a, I had a special little thing that everybody did and used, which I guarantee 99.9% .9 of the teams don't use. Yeah. Well, they got that with me. Yeah. Okay. Well, when they come to me, we build them an app, and that's included in the service price. Yeah. And that app's strictly for, for reviews, mm -hmm. um, where reviews are automatic. You don't have to go hunt for reviews. You get, you get reviews like that. Yeah. So those are the bonuses that we add into our training, <laughs> yeah. to our packages and stuff. 
Okay. Does that make sense? It does. It's, yeah. It certainly does. And I guess when when companies start seeing the benefits and they see the, I, would, I don't want to say special treatment because it's not like you're treating one client special over anyone else, but when they see the attention and and the commitment, right? I think that can help them move forward. I, I know we're running close to time. I'd like to mention one thing that we're, there's my partner sure. and I are starting what we call the TAS. Yeah. Our TAS. It's called uh, the Alliance Zone. And what it is is we're trying to bring local businesses together that will become an alliance, just like other alliances, and that pool will help us in their business as well as every other business, Mm -hmm. and make it affordable so they can join and have all of these services available to them rather than being gouged by other services companies out there. So that's something that I'm looking forward to launching here very soon. And we're going to launch it here in the Greenville market, in the Phoenix market, and the Chicago market because that's where we have connections. Absolutely. And I, and I love that. I love the whole really idea over that because most people think with business is competition, right? It's competition, competition. But what I get from you is when you talk about a team and g- gathering people together or even in our conversations, of, you know, how can I help you? Because you have this I – I sense almost a passion of helping others. Where does that come from? Where does that, that, what joy do you get in, in seeing a swimmer get their fastest time ever or a business, uh, a business owner calling you saying, Terry, I, I, I couldn't get on Google. Now I have three, three links on the first page. Yeah. Um, it's just innate. I, I can't really tell you. I mean, my parents, you know, I'm an only child, so I was spoiled <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and I was taken care of and loved. And so I think that transfers to me trying to spoil and help other people. Yeah. You know, I mean, that's really what I'm doing. Yeah. I mean, I, I take every client personal and I feel bad if they're not successful. Mm-hmm. And um, so I think that's where it comes from. Just innate within me to do that. Yeah. Well, I'm pretty sure there's a lot of listeners that are that are kind of tuned in right now that would love to be spoiled and, and, and things like that. Terry, how can folks reach out to you and uh, and maybe get into contact with you and learn more about what you do? Well, that's good. Uh, they can check me out on LinkedIn. Terry Palma, um, and then also multi-channel media have a Facebook page, Mm -hmm. um, and then a a phone number they could call if they'd like to is 864-999-3008, and that will, you'll get a message, that's a message service for me, Mm -hmm. and, but I return calls immediately on that. Wonderful, wonderful, and I'm going to have all that linked and all the information in the show notes for people to get to, and, uh, the name of the show is called No Rain, No Rainbows. We get through our rain. Um, what are the rainbows you're chasing in life? What are some of the, the sunshines and the goals that you're, you're currently chasing? Um, <laughs> well, I'm 70, so most of my rainbows I've, I've already fulfilled. Okay. Uh, basically, I'm trying to leave a legacy for my four kids. And, you know, that's, that's uh, every day I get up is a good day. Yeah, I love that. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. And I, I'm pretty sure a lot of people could resonate with that yeah. because, as you mentioned, with the, the program you've built and, and the swimming team that you built for Greenville and the fact where you, you still have their accolades and you can see something after you've, you've kind of passed it on, the legacy continues. So I, I think for a lot of us, we all we want in life is to build something that's going to outlast us, right? Yes. A legacy and, and seeing the success in others, I think, is is something that naturally feels good to all of us. Right. We love to help each other out. Ted, I want to thank you for having me. It's been a pleasure to be here. Yeah. You're a great host. <laughs> Terry, uh, Your my format's pleasure. fantastic. Thank you. Yeah. And that's that's my alarm. I'm actually getting ready to... To drive the girlfriend to the airport. There you go. This is <laughs> going to be airing a couple of weeks down the line, so she's already <laughs> listening to this wherever she's at. But, Terry, it's been a pleasure to have you on the show, and, and I, f- I feel as if this is just the first of, of multiple chapters great, that great. we're going to be having together. And so. if I can do anything for your show or help in any way, d- don't hesitate to ask. I'd be happy to do that. Absolutely, and I, I appreciate that, and I do hope that our listeners take advantage of, of some of the services that, that you provide. And, um, again, in the show notes, we'll have the link for for folks to get to to all of that great but terry Thanks. thank you so Ted, much for taking the time yep. to be on the show and we we always end the show like this everybody wants the sunshine but they don't want the rain but you can't get the pleasure without a little pain let's grow <laughs>